Hello there and welcome back to another review. So picking up with some more Jet Li now, we're going to be having a look at Jet Li's Hitman, which I've got here. A um, lot to be said about this movie. It's one of them movies not a lot of people are well, in terms of Jet Li movies, um, it's often regarded, it's not necessarily regarded to be one of his all-time best, but we'll be getting into Hitman today and see how it holds up. Directed by Stephen Tung and starring, of course, Jet, Simon Yam, Eric Sang and Gigi Lung. Now, I remember this film being a bit of a standout, largely because I remember when it came out, it was largely at the time... But obviously, Jet was just about to go to Hollywood. He was just doing Lethal Weapon 4. And at the time, you wasn't sure if this was going to be his last Hong Kong movie, full stop. You had no idea if Jet was going to come back to Hong Kong because he obviously, like I say, tried um, to do his American career. And uh, so I think the Jet, like the American movies, I think for the most part, I think they handled Jet a lot better than what they did with Jackie. I think Jackie was put in some films that, for the most part... Not all of them, some are better than others, but when you look at films like The Tuxedo or Spy Next Door, I think they try to aim Jackie Chan um, more at kids uh, for some reason. And Jet, for whatever re with Jet, I think they gave Jet a bit more respect. I think Jet got a bit more, his movies were a bit more like grittier, uh, a bit Jet's movies were a bit more adult uh, in nature. Jackie Chan was marketed, obviously, the kung fu comedy, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with Jackie Chan and his light-hearted films, but I think sometimes... You know, Hollywood and, you know, the powers that be, the Western world, wasn't quite sure where to put Jackie in some of some of the movies that not saying they're not saying they're all bad. Um, but I think, like I say, when you look at movies like The Tuxedo and Spy Next Door, it was a bit you did raise an eyebrow a little bit. But and it's going back to what I was saying, the point in hand before I just go on a complete tangent about something you're not even here for. Um Hitman at the time you wasn't sure if this was gonna be um Jet's last film like I say because they made in Hong Kong before he went to the US to start his Hollywood career, like you know, Romeo must die and all that. So no not to say the film is bad, but it always felt to me like it was just an average Jet Li movie. Like it was just an average Jet Li movie to me. Like it's not one of those films where you like, it's not, you won't have to say, oh, what, God, you've never seen Hitman with Jet Li. Like you've got to check it out. Like, no, it's it's not that kind of movie. Um, I think at the time, um, I think as, like, as far as we knew, as I say, this was Jet's going to be Jet's last Hong Kong movie. I think we just wanted more. I wanted more in what I wanted, like Jet to leave his Hong Kong movies on a high note, and I think Hitman. When I first saw it, I was just totally underwhelmed with it. I was just, it's. I know there are people that. I mean, if you enjoy Hitman, good for you. But I was just really underwhelmed with Hitman uh, when I first saw it. It just doesn't quite hit the highs of some of Jet's better movies. I mean, if you watch it in the original language, it is worth noting as well. It's one of the only films at the time, or maybe even the first time, I think, that Jet actually uses his real voice. I think what lets Hitman down is, for the most part, is someone's, it's not sure. You know when you get their movies where it's not sure what it wants to be? And that is that sort of applies to Hitman. Like it, I think it's trying to wear so many different hats at the same time, and it can't. It doesn't really do anyone like any of them really well. Um, so I think it's it just like one minute it wants to be a comedy, then it wants to be an action film, then it wants to be all serious, then it wants to be a gunplay flick, then it wants to be a kung fu flick, and it doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite really settle and on on any of these. And one thing I've learned over the years regarding Jet's '90s output is that a lot of the films divide so many people. Um, Jet Li's movies, especially during the 90s, not talking of his American stuff, I mean his Hong Kong stuff as well, a lot of his movies does divide so, so many people. Like, um, some, there's films that people love, some don't. I mean, Black Mask is a fine example. Um, some people like it, some people can't stand it. I absolutely love Black Mask. But I have spoken to people, and I've read online people like reviewing Black Mask, People can't. People hate it. There's people that actually don't like uh, Black Mask, and like I say, Jet's movies are really, uh, for the most part, quite divided. Uh, when you go into it and do a bit of research, a lot of Jet's movies are very, very uh, divided with the audiences. Like, um, you know, when you say what's your favourite Jet Li movie or Jet Li, Jet Li. Um, I always mix it up. I've always called him Jet Li uh, because when I was buying his movies back in the day, it was Jet Li, L W E. Um, but I know he's sort of Jet Li now, but I just still call him Jet Li. Um, but um, there's so many movies. Like when you say, what's your favourite Jet Li movie? 
to anybody if you're a Hong Kong movie fan it's everybody will have a different answer Fist of Legend Bodyguard from Beijing Fong Sai Yuk or, like, everyone would have a different answer but as I say it's very very um, it's very interesting when people say what is the best Jet Li movie because there's they're all different they're all unique in their own way so as, as I say we're going back to um, Hitman as I say I think some of the camera work um, using this movie is not the best sometimes like Especially when it comes to the action, not to say the action in this movie isn't good, but let's just say I don't think the fight scenes are the best scenes in the world. And this is a very different role for Jet. This is this is no like Wong Fei Hong or Fong Se Yuk here, and he plays the part really well. And that's the sort of and he shares a lot of screen time with Eric Sang, who is like Eric Sang in this movie. He has just as much to do as Jet does. So he probably has more to do than what Jet does. Um, if anything, Eric Sang, I'd, you could even argue, maybe even has uh, more screen time. Simon Yam, the forever talented Simon Yam, it's great to have him here. I just think he's really underused, but you have to give the film some credit, or at least it was it was Jet trying something new, playing a different role that we had never seen before, rather than just the upright noble hero like we saw him like Wong Fei Hung. If nothing else, it's a movie that proves Jet can handle comedy moments just as well, like comedy moments just as well as the action. Regarding the action, it's very spaced out. It's not like the, one of them movies where the action is constantly flowing, or uh, we're on the next action scene or anything like that. It is really spaced out and this isn't one of these movies where the action is non-stop and as i mentioned the action is okay it's just unfortunately none of the fights or the confrontations are all that memorable unfortunately and it's one of the movies that i would say you only need to watch this one if you're a hardcore jet fan um if i was put it this way if i was compiling a list of my or the, the top 10 jet lee movies hitman wouldn't be in there Hitman would not be in there, but as I say, if you like this movie, good for you. This is just my opinion on what I think of the movie. And I remember the first time I watched this, uh, it was on a DVD uh, from the now defunct Hong Kong Legends label. And I think with Snake and the Eagle's Shadow, um, I think Hitman was one of the first. If I, I know Snake and the Eagle's Shadow was the first one they released. Cause I remember when it came out, I had to go, because I had it on video, and it was like the DVDs were sort of new at the time. And I had to go, I must get Snake and the Eagle's Shadow on DVD. I was so hyped, like, oh my God, Snake and the Eagle's Shadow on DVD. But I remember Hitman coming out shortly after that. I think Hitman come out was one of the first ones. Uh, Thought they released on that label and the film opens with this text scroll informing us the viewer of the angel of death who is like an assassin who will do any hit for free as they are all evil men anyway then we get this masked assassin going into this building to take out this japanese boss and i do like the idea of having this mystery but like sort of badass assassin and we have no idea who he is so he takes out this boss using shotguns and fisticuffs and after destroying some bulletproof glass he blasts the old man away and as an opening to a movie goes it really isn't bad like as the film when the film opens you think oh this scene this looks interesting interesting this this looks pretty cool we meet jet as foo is buying some groceries and he's trying to get the right change i always remember being very impressed with jet's hair in this movie because <laughs> you'd never sort of seen him with this sort of uh haircut before but as they've got it looked yeah actually i think it actually quite suits him uh his hair in this movie so he's part of this gang of criminals though they think he's sort of freeloading and not pulling his weight and basically jet wants a big hit so he can earn some extra cash cash so the grandson of the guy who was killed eats his grandfather's ashes which i think after doing some research so i think it you know obviously it wasn't real ash he was eating but i think it was actually sugar that uh, was used in place of uh, um, the ashes and he wants revenge and calls his far his own father a coward we then meet Simon Yam as Officer Chan Kwan, and a bounty is placed on the killer. Other assassins have had a meet, and this is where we meet Eric Sang as Lowe, who helps sort of Jet get in, and he's like he's sort of like a small-time uh, criminal hustler type. You could liken him in a way, sort of, sort of the Joe Pesci like lethal weapon. Eric Sang is like in this in this movie here. He's sort of a bit of like that character, like the Leo Getz character. I mean, make no mistake, this is like I say, this is just as much an Eric Sang movie as Jet Light. I'm supposed like on like the posters. I know on the posters it's got Simon Yam, Giggy, Jet, and Eric, but on the posters it should just be literally Eric at the front because it is literally an Eric. I know Jet's like the main lead here, but it, as I say, it's just as much as as an Eric Sang. Um, vehicle as it is um as it is a jet lee movie and i remember watching it the first time as well thinking damn it like he got way more screen time than i was expecting i was expecting just the comedy sidekick but they really they really do bring eric sang's character forward more than they probably should Yam's character is there and wants to know what is going on, all about this revenge fund. Um, the OG, the grandson, finds out there was this military banknote in his grandfather's body dating back to the Second World War. So basically, the whole idea is 
this guy's been bumped off they like there's this uh, like fund that's been established that like the, by the grandson wants to find out who did it there's this mysterious killer that's done it and so basically eric sees like sort of potential in jet and takes him under his wing have to love how the movie is about hitmen killing revenge murder and it's like for the time being let's make a comedy you know, it, like I say, it, it does suffer a little bit from uh, from like an identity crisis, unfortunately. You know, they, they, so if they make a comedy, then it's like, then go serious when we have to. And it's like them two tones that juxtapose together that don't always really work that well. So after making sure Jet can fight, Lowe goes out to buy him some new threads and look out for the homages and in-jokes here to Leon and Better Tomorrow, which was actually quite a nice little in-joke. And, you know, he likes he, he wears like the cherry and fat trench coat at one point and everything, so that was quite cool. So yeah, Eric sees Jet as an investment. They go to this restaurant, we learn that Jet has a massive appetite as Eric tries to get him some work. Then we have this carnival scene, and I have to love how Eric is like, look, just go over there and cut the guy's heart out. Like I say, it's a movie about hitmen, revenge, killing, uh, barbaric deaths and everything, and then they try and make they try and interplay that like it's really funny um, and things like that. But anyway, I thought that line was quite funny. Like, just go over there and cut his heart out. Piece of cake. There's some other like some other assassins turn up and start unleashing gunfire on the guy, and Jet tries to stop them. It's such a shame the film really can't make up its mind what it wants to be. Not exactly a huge action film, and I think there's only, only one word I could use to describe Hitman. It's like I've mentioned. It's just that it's underwhelming. It's just that it's underwhelming. It like I say it has sort of half funny scenes it has sort of half good action in it but it doesn't really go all the way with either of them so eric's daughter kiki bows them out after yams arrest them the guy the guy they say gives them five thousand for helping him i mean surely this guy they were after he gives them some money and i mean surely the contract still exists and who even is this guy so kiki is ashamed of her father like eric's character and jet decides to move in with him where he has to read this massive encyclopedia that guide you through a step-by-step -step on how to be a hitman and this with this point in the movie is when the comedy really does come forward like they really make it a comedy they really do bring that forward like using a banana so we can see how he holds his gun which jet ends up eating then we have Ch jet and kiki going like ice skating and it really does slow down here when the two go ice skating it really does come to a standstill like it's just going through the motions and killing time at that point i mean don't get me wrong it's hitman is entertaining enough but I would say it's probably only for hardcore Jet Li fans. Um, if you if you've never seen it before, just nothing seems to be happening for some reason. Don't ask why, but the film just, it just it feels a hitman. It feels like it's cheaply made. It feels like it hasn't got high production values about it. it I can't put even put my finger on what it is about hitman. But there's something like inherently cheap about it it seems like it's it feels like a cheap movie don't ask me why so jet and eric save this old guy mr lung and run into this caucasian priest who has like grenades jet here has a fight with this tough guy who has like a laser ring cool gimmick you know he's got an, like a laser ring so lung this guy lung dies yam is always as reliable as ever as the seasoned cop who wants to solve the case even as i say even if he is vastly underused so we get some actual plot and backstory and it turns out this mr lung contacted eric and wanted vengeance on someone who killed his family during the war eric is like look here is my account information you pay me when he is killed and the fact is someone did kill the guy he was after but it wasn't eric so the baddies trace it to sort of Eric Sang's bank account, if that makes sense. So an assassin comes to his apartment, shoots the place up, and I love how, like, with, if you remember Time and Tide in the apartment shootout scene, not one of the neighbours complains. Or like um, Soy Hark's uh, apartment in uh, Yes, Madam, like explosions, gunfire going off all the time. None of the neighbours on the same floor or, like, the next apartment seem to be that worried, and it's basically the same here. Um nobody seems to be worried and the, and the fights like i mentioned are just so so they're just you won't say god oh, that's love that fight in hitman it's 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 one of them films it's entertaining enough but at the same time it's just instantly forgettable um but as i say the fights are just so so like when you think this is meant to be a jet lee movie i was just expecting so much more to be fair we do actually get quite a cool action scene in an elevator shaft and it's easily the standout moment of the film so far and it's actually really well done so all that happens is at the moment they think eric is the angel of death that's all it is you know you've got this masked this unknown assassin at this point in time they think eric sang is the angel of death so 
We have all these comedy scenes, then some violent action, then we also get some drama thrown in for good measure with Eric saying I don't have any friends to Jet and that he is the only one he has. Yam just keeps coming and going like he's on screen when he feels like, almost like, it's almost like the filmmaker's going, um, look, we have Simon Yam here, and then he just disappears. It's like, oh, don't worry, don't forget, we've got Simon Yam here. Um, like, let's say, just, you know, just sort of comes and goes. So, spoiler warning, if you don't want to know the ending of the movie, stop watching now. Just stop watching now, um, if you don't want the reveal. So it turns out Yam is the angel of death and the film at the end keeps with that drama vibe and does try it does try to be heartfelt with Eric being honest with his daughter and confessing about what he does but that's what I'm saying it really it tries to go full drama and then it tries to go full comedy and it tries like I say it, it almost like it's trying to be hard to be all these things but also being none of these things at the same time which is a real real shame um, does say he's confessing about what he does, and it just astounds me, even watching it again recently, just how much of a back seat Jet has to take to Eric Sang in this movie. Like he really does have to take a back seat. Um, so they go to the HQ of our baddies. Jet pretends to kill Eric for the reward. When Yam turns up, or say probably the gunplay in this movie, it's actually better. The gunplay, I would probably you could argue, is better shot, filmed, and more entertaining than what the actual fight scenes are. I think the the gunplay for the most part, holds up more um, than what the fight scenes do. So Jet, of course, has to take on this laser ring guy again. And I have to love how this angel of death, this legendary assassin, also got a job as a cop. I mean, that's one heavy workload. That is one heavy workload. If you're working for the police force and you're also like this real, like this tough, hard-as-nails angel of death assassin, you're never going to have a day off. You're going to be constantly busy. So talk about spreading yourself thin. So the Japanese grandson ends up falling on a sword. Then the film ends with Yam, Jet and Eric walking out and some, invest some money in Coca-Cola shares. That's that's how the film sort of ends. It's, it, the, the film ends so bizarre. Like, it can't even make sense of itself. Like, you know, like I saw that coming. It's like you, you don't watch this thinking, oh, they're going to get some shares in Coca-Cola. So they're all happy and, Jam, and Yam wants Jet to be the new angel of death. Like, it, you, okay, you know, whatever, but definitely not the greatest Jet Li movie ever made. It's one of the movies I think not only the most, like I say, hardcore seasoned Jet Li fans need to see this one. It's okay, but as I say, it really doesn't know what it wants to be, and it does suffer from, I think you could, I, I think if I could just put it in words, like, what the problem is with Hitman, it just has an identity crisis, unfortunately. But at the time, I was really so. It was I was the the reception to Hitman was quite lukewarm. It wasn't great, um, but I was just expecting so much more. Um, it's because at the time, like I say, you wasn't sure because when he went on to do, like I say, um, Lethal Weapon Four, Romeo Must Die, Kiss of the Dragon, The One, and he was in the like the third Mummy movie. You wasn't sure if Jet was gonna do more. Hong Kong movies at the time. You wasn't sure if he was going to come back and do more. Luckily he did. But at the time, you was like, so that's what we're left with. And it was just, like I say, just left a bit of a... Not bad taste in your mouth, but you was just expecting so much more. But as I say, watching it again recently, I hadn't seen it for a couple of years now, but watching it again, it's amazing how much, like I say, Jet gets pushed to the side in favour uh, of Eric Sane. But as I say, if you have seen Hitman and you love it, let me know. What do you think of Hitman? Leave it a note in the, uh, in the comments below what you actually think of Hitman. As I say, I know people are divided by loads of Jet Li movies, but I think Hitman, for the most part, I think most people agree it's... Not really one of Jet Li's best, and if people do think it is one of Jet Li's best, they probably haven't seen like the Fong Sai Yuk movies, or you know, or like Doctor Wei or Black Mask, or whatever it may be. So let me know what you think of Hitman. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger, or you will miss all that heavenly glory.